Okay, um, welcome everybody uh, to tonight's meeting. Um, this is a remote meeting and teleconference using Zoom uh, pursuant to 1 MRSA section 403-A. Um, people can access the meeting agenda and materials related to a specific project by finding the links in the abutter notice or on the homepage of the city's website under public notices at sanfordmain.org and following Zoom login directions. Um, and then it's also uh, on, this, on the screen, the meeting agenda and password. Uh, so welcome to the uh, Sanford Planning Board's uh, June 3rd, 2020 meeting. The meeting will come to order. This is a public proceeding and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, you have the right to hear everything that is being said and to look at all the exhibits that are offered. Please notify the chair if you are unable to hear or see something. The board works from a prepared agenda and will consider tonight's agenda in the following order. One, new business file 11-20-R, Con Edison Solar, Con Edison Care of Mark Chrysos. Number two, old business file 03-19-R, R. Pepin and Sons, Inc., Care of Matthew Pepin. Please know that if any planning board members have potential conflicts of interest of which they are aware, they will disclose the conflict prior to the board initiating a hearing or action on an application. Planning board decisions are based solely on whether an applicant has provided sufficient evidence to meet the requirements of local, state, and federal laws. After the board votes on the merits of each project, it will vote on written findings of fact. Since the findings may substantially affect any appeals rights and also as a matter of courtesy, the board asks that those attending the meeting not leave until the board has adopted the findings for the project which you are interested in. After the planning board makes its final decision, any reconsideration by the board must be made at the next regularly scheduled meeting. If anyone wishes to appeal the board's final decision, he or she must do so within 30 days. The city's ordinances and comprehensive plan are available for viewing on the city's website and in the planning and development department office at 919 Main Street and at sanfordmain.org. Uh, so with that, we will move into our agenda. Um, there are no minutes uh, for approval this evening. So we'll move right into new business uh, file 11-20-R, Con Edison Solar on Edison care of Mark Chrysos. And Beth, if you want to take us through a brief introduction, please. Yes, um, just a moment. I'm trying to find my notes. Um, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Let me see. Um, yes. Um, so uh, Con Edison um, is requesting major site plan approval for four point, approximately 4.41 megawatt solar utility solar system on property that's owned by the Sanford Library Association, uh, located on uh, Country, Club, Country Club Lane. Uh, uh, the parcel is 106 acres. Um, uh, the applicant is proposing to occupy approximately um, uh, uh, just under 20 acres of the site with a just under another under a bit of bit under half an acre occupied by the approximately 11,000 panels. Um, I, the site plan review committee did review the project yesterday um, at its meeting and unanimously voted to recommend approval of the project with a, a significant number of conditions, uh, most of which are relatively minor, adding a note adding some uh, uh, some ordinance standards to the plan. Uh, there are a few issues uh, that are, uh, are need to be discussed, um, including the fact that there are a number of outside agencies that um, have some level of engagement in this review, whether they have a permit or not. They do have oversight on various natural resources, primarily natural resources. And the PUC clearly has um, a role in this as well. If I could just ask whoever is not muting themselves to mute themselves, we can hear the TV in the background and it's distracting and makes it difficult for the meeting to continue. 
Um, thank you, Beth. That's my introduction. Uh, I, I hate to um, take a step, step back, but I just realized that we did not do a um, initial roll call. Okay. Um, yep. I, I apologize. I was getting ahead of myself. So if we would um, want to do that, please. And I just want to give sure. the board the head up, heads up. Um, we'll uh, take a slightly different approach this evening um, just to um, be a little bit more equitable. We'll... Uh, start with Jace in our roll call as we normally do um, in alphabetical um, and then we'll start with the, the next person uh, in, in the alphabetical order so for example Jace would start and the next round Diane would start etc and down the line um, so with that uh, why don't we uh, start with our roll call okay um, Jace present Diane? Present. Lenny? Present. Jack? Present. Tom? Here. Crystal? Present. And Jennifer? Present. Okay. Uh, um, sorry about that. that. That's, uh, all seven people are in attendance. Okay, so with that, then um, we'll get jump back into our agenda, and um, I'll ask if um, Mark Chrisos, uh, if you want to uh, please state your um, name, address, and uh, you we if you want to present your an overview of the project uh, to the board, and uh, you have uh, up to twenty minutes to make that presentation. I don't know, Beth, um, if you want to give us a two minute warning, uh, just in case. I will be happy to. Thank you. And then, uh, Chris, I don't know if there's anything you would like to share on the screen, um, but please feel free to, to do so sure. as well. Sure, so uh, thank you everyone for letting us uh, on the meetings, on the Zoom meeting tonight, we're all getting a bit better, I guess, at Zoom meetings. But I, I certainly hope it'll end soon, and <laughs> in-person in meetings, in-person meetings are again uh, allowed. Um, uh, my name is Mark Crisos. I'm a senior project developer for the Northeast Region for Con Edison Clean Energy Business. I've worked for the company around seven years, and I live just across the border in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Um, on the phone with us as part of the project team, we have Ian Diamond. Ian's a senior project developer, very experienced, working all over the country on solar and renewable energy projects. And Ian and I are working together to advance solar projects in Maine. We're very excited about it. And fortunately, Sanford is our first project in Maine, and we can talk about that. Um, our consultants, yeah, I think you might know uh, our consultants, Craig Craig uh, Burgess from, from Sebago Techniques. Many of you know Craig, he, he supported several projects in the city. And Kendra Ramsell, Kendra's on the phone with us here. She's a civil engineer who's helping in the development of the drawings and other deliverables support, to support our applications. Um, just a quick little bit about Con Edison Clean Energy Businesses. Um, we are an unregulated division of Con Edison Inc. As you many know, um, as you may know, Con Edison Inc. is one of the oldest utilities in the United States. It's been around for about 190 years. Keeps the lights on in Manhattan and New York. Um, Con Edison Clean Energy Businesses is about 10 years old with our first solar project constructed about eight years ago in Dartmouth, Massachusetts, which was about two megawatts on about 10 acres. From that time, we've grown to over 2,600 megawatts and we're currently operating in several states, including Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, New York, Texas, California, and Arizona. One thing about Con Edison clean energy business that makes us very unique is that we are, we develop, we build, and then we operate all of our sites. So the message there from us is that if there is an issue with the Sanford Solar Project, you will see a Con Edison employee address that problem. We don't sub anything out. We don't have other people do work for us. They're all 
our employees. We have about 500 employees across the United States. Um, we're very excited about entering the main solar market, and we look forward to working with the city to advance our project. As Beth said, located just off Route 4 on the land owned by the, uh, by the trustees of the Sanford Library. Um, our proposed project will be about 3.5 megawatts AC, which is alternating current, which is actually what is being fed into the electric system of CMP, Central Main Power. And as Beth said, a, a little bit less than 20 acres. Um, and what I'd like to do next after my introduction is turn this over to Craig, who's already put on the screen um, some information for you all to consider, which is um, the first drawing you should all be looking at. So with that, um, Craig. Good evening. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. My name is my name is Craig Burgess with Sebago Technics. So this, the site is located along Route 4, just south of the Genest concrete facility, approximately three quarters of a mile. The site itself is about 106 acres, which is represented by this red line here on the screen. The development itself, the solar development, will only consist of 20 acres of that 106 acres. The site is bounded by residential to the north, the airport and the golf course to the east, more residential to the south and route four to the immediate west. Access will be from route, be provided from route four. And you can see that there's quite a distance to get into the actual facility. This plan is shown approximately five to 600 feet before we get to the solar array area, which is located here. As part of the process in Sanford, the permitting process, we have reached out to all the different state agencies, Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, Maine Historic, and Maine Natural Areas Program. As a result of reaching out to those agencies, they provided us their feedback for the site. And you've, if you've had a chance to review the memo that Beth pre prepared, you probably noticed that there were several issues that were discussed. We've worked closely with all of the state agencies and we've worked through most of those issues. The only outstanding issue still is the cedar swamp area to the south here. That cedar swamp area, main natural areas, the main natural area program and inland fisheries and wildlife, they're requiring a 250 foot setback from that swamp. We show it here represented by this blue line on the overall site plan. When we sent this to both agencies, they feel that the cedar swamp was actually a little bit larger. So we Sebago Technics actually met Maine Natural Areas on site last week, and we're really working closely with them to nail down that habitat limit. We understand that there there are some there will be some changes relative to that buffer. So after our committee meeting yesterday, we worked really quick to try to prepare what that solar layout may look like. which is represented here. So you can see that the overall layout is generally the same. And where that habitat was, was now located is, is the majority of that wetland to the south. The magenta line here represents the 250 foot cedar swamp buffer. So you can see that we're staying completely out of that buffer. This afternoon, I already reached out to both inland fisheries and Maine natural areas to get that process going so we can get ultimately uh, ultimate approval from both of those agencies. There were some other issues that were brought that we've been able to work through, including a black racer snake habitat. Maine inland fisheries and wildlife visited the site and they do not see this site um, suitable for a black racer snake. We conducted a vernal pool assessment across the entire parcel and the only area that we found a non-significant vernal pool is located in the southwest corner, which is greater than 250 feet away from this development. Again, I want to mention it was a non-significant vernal pool. Some other areas, some other species of concern identified by Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife were the was is the deer wintering habitat. The site is located at the northern the fringe of that habitat. Deer 
wintering area is not regulated by the state of Maine unless a site development permit is required. In discussions with Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, they do not have any major issues with the site located where it's at. Also, the, the northern long-eared bat, that's, that's a species that comes up almost on every single project, and they do not see any issues with the bat with this development. So with that said, that's about all I have to present, and I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. And, and Craig, one other point um, per, pursuant to um, getting agency clearance, we have this week in the field the phase one archaeologic shovel test going on. It's five days with two people, and we'll have results for that within a couple weeks. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, so why don't we open this up to um, the planning board uh, for discussion then? Um, Excuse me, Jennifer, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, this is a public yes. hearing. So you oh, may want to. My apologies, the uh, agenda threw me off. <laughs> um, so uh, with that, we'll uh, declare the public hearing open. And I will ask uh, the members of the public if there's anybody who um, wishes to speak uh, in favor of the project. Okay, I didn't hear anybody out there. Uh, so I will next ask if there is anybody here uh, who would like to speak who's opposed to the project. And somebody who would like to speak who's neither for nor against, but who may have a comment. Okay, Thanks, so Sarah. with that, I, yes. Um, yes, I, I do want to make, um, go on the record to indicate that I have received two email um, comments. They're really questions uh, and, and expression of concern. Um, if I could read those into the record, I'd appreciate it. Yes, please. Okay, the first one is from um, a, a gentleman named Richard Barnaby. Um, good morning, my name is Richard Barnaby, 456 Country Club Road, Sanford, Maine, and I am a direct abutter of the proposed solar facility. First, I would like to address the short notice on this matter. How is anyone supposed to prepare when they get the notice two days in advance of a meeting that's been in the works for months? Questions and concerns. Is there going to be a zoning change or making an allowance for commercial use in a RR zone? If so, what is the impact on abutters? The second thing he said is what will be the impact on abutters, lighting, noise, traffic, et cetera, or impact on values? And then he finally says, is there a financial benefit, uh, parentheses, revenue on um, end parentheses for the city? Taxes are, are already too high and assessed unfairly. We need to address this. Um, I did forward um, this email to the planning board along with the response that I, I sent him uh, the same day trying to clarify some of the uh, straight answers about the zoning, et cetera. Um, so that is the first comment. The second one I received late today, which I also forwarded on to you, although um, you may not have had a chance to look at it. Hold on just one second. I just opened the wrong email. Um, let me see if I can find it. Oh, of course, I closed it. Give me just one second. I have to go back into my uh, material to find this woman's email. Um, here it is. Um, this is from Louise Barubi. Um, and I believe that I looked up her address and, because she did not provide it. Um, hold on, let me see if I can find it. 396 Country Club Road. Um, and the email that she sent uh, says, hello, I am Louise Ruby and a butter to the plan location. I am concerned with the buffer zone between my house and the solar field. I would like to know if this solar field produces any noise and if so, what kind of sound would that be? I'm also concerned if this will anyway to value my property i will be watching the planning board meeting tonight to get more information thank you louise and i did again 
um, respond to her. Um, uh, and um, uh, I ended up having a conversation. I, I, I answered her question about noise as best as I can, but suggested that I would ask the applicant to point out the location of that abutter and uh, potentially to respond about um, noise and visibility from that property. Um, and then uh, I also approached Jeff Gomont in the assessor's office to specifically ask him about uh, financial, uh, excuse me, that uh, impact on the value of um, Louise's property. Um, I shared with him the plans that I had, and unfortunately, I did not have the revised plans. Um, and he indicated that based upon the distance between uh, the array and the butters uh, property, as well as the fact that the bulk of that area will remain wooded, that he did not see any impact um, on um, uh, any impact on on the value of her home. That's all I had to say. I just read it in. Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. Um, should we open it up to the planning board now, um, or should we um, ask that the, I think there was a couple questions there um, for the applicant to uh, address regarding uh, the buffer in that Whether you'd like to handle it. Your choice. Sure. Um, yeah, um, if, if the applicant, Mark, if you'd like to um, address some of those um, points, that, that would be great. Sure. So, so um, Mr. Barnaby's comments about um, where the site is located, Craig, maybe you can page down. His, his parcel is, is well below, well, we'll see it in a minute. His, he owns the property there, as Craig's mentioning, and that is going to be several hundred feet from the road which is then several hundred feet from the from the actual project so we see no um we see no um uh, visual issues or anything with that him being located that distance away to the south um louise bar louise's Ms. her comment was a couple of things visual and noise i'll, I'll address noise first um, there's really no noise or lighting. We have no lighting associated with the solar farm. Once it, once the sun sets, the solar farm goes down to sleep, if you will, and we have no reason to go in there, so we have no lighting. Second of all, on, on the buffer, we, we have maintained um, the minimum, actually greater than the minimum. Craig, if you can show the revised drawing, it's probably more applicable. Um, on when we when we um as craig mentioned requ we're required to relocate the facility due to the cedar swarm we moved it to the west a bit and as you see there there's minimum setbacks um at 60 feet but as we proceed south um her residents will have probably about um i don't know about 100 150 feet um and that's pretty well wooded so we don't expect that she'll see any um uh, she'll see any part of the, of the solar farm. So we've maintained per the ordinance 60 feet, but as we move south, of course, that's that's greater and that gives a better level of buffer between the solar farm project and the um, and the abutters. Great, thank you. Uh, Mark, shall, uh, this is Ian Diamond from Condon. Would you like me to address the question about noise and about oh, property sorry. tax? Yes, please. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for your time. Ian Diamond from Con Edison. Uh, just to address the questions uh, from the public. With regards to property tax, uh, there was property tax legislation uh, enacted in 2019 at the state level under LD1430 PL2019 Chapter 440. Uh, that provides exemption for property tax from our perspective, but the state uh, will be remunerating the towns with regards to property tax associated with solar projects of this size. So uh, I do welcome that uh, somebody at the town board or the town tax assessor's office could uh, verify that. But we're under, under the impression that the state does recompense, recompense the, the cities and the towns for property tax for these projects. With regards to uh, noise, 
it, the solar projects are not completely silent, uh, but these are not like wind turbines. And the noise is a uh, very small sound from the inverters, which is rated at 65 decibels at one meter. Now, if you pardon my accent, you can tell I'm from New York. <laughs> not really, I'm from Australia, but we're, we're, I'm used to meters, but uh, one meter, a little bit more than three feet. 65 dB at, at, at three feet. To give you a comparison, conversational speech at the same distance is 60 decibels. So these are a little bit louder than conversational speech from three feet away. So there will be you know, uh, virtually, uh, it won't be my hearing because I'm losing my hearing, but even at, uh, at 20 or 30 feet, there will be no, no discernible sound from, from the solar array whatsoever. Great, thank you for that. That was helpful, thanks. Okay, uh, with that then, why don't we open it up to the board for a discussion now? Um, so starting with Diane. You didn't yes. want to start with Jason? We started with Jason, Jason. before, we're rotating now. My apologies. Um, I have three concerns. Um, one is uh, recently there was a solar project uh, in town that had a episode with uh, wildlife uh, with deer being caught in the fencing. Um, I would like to ask the applicant um, if they are putting barbed wire on the top of their seven inch, seven foot fence, um, and also ask them if. Uh, during the project if they could check uh, for any wildlife uh, that's trapped within the uh, fencing and upon completion um, to have them uh, double check to make sure if all possible all wildlife uh, is um, out of the fence uh, project. Um, I'd also like to talk about the ATV trail that goes to the northeast section of the project and also would like to talk about the um, performance guarantee at the end of the project and hear about how that's going to be done. And that's everything. Sure. I, I can, I can address those. Um, so the first question is wildlife. We do have experience. First of all, I will assure you that we will not have barbed wire at a fence. We do not place barbed wire. We don't believe it's a good idea. We'd rather see, um, no issues at all. Um, so no barbed wire. Seven foot high fence is our national electrical code. Um, that is a requirement of, of any uh, energized facility um, in the United States. Um, we do have experience with deer in our facilities in New Jersey. Um, I will assure you that uh, the gates are always locked. We don't leave the gates open. So the only way a deer can get in, and they do occasionally, they can jump seven feet. So we've had experiences in New Jersey where we found wildlife and we basically herded them out, if you will, out of the gate and we've locked the gate. So um, no barbed wire. We will maintain um, vigilance on if we see any wildlife and handle it accordingly. Um, does that answer your first question, Diane? Yes, ma yes, it does. Okay, great. Moving on to the ATV trail, uh, Craig, can you point out the ATV trail, please? The ATV and snowmobile trail is located right there. And what we've done is we've set aside um, space within the, just outside the fence line, but within the occupied area, Craig can point that out, um, that we, we will reroute the trail to then connect back to the original configuration of the trail. Craig and I had exchanged emails with the Snowmobilers Association to assure them that that will be addressed. Okay, we also have a we also have an ATV club. I was wondering if some notification okay. could be given to them as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We we Craig, you have the name of the gentleman from the Snowmobile Association, correct? Yes, I yes I do. I I believe is are the, do you know if the ATV club and the snowmobile club are they two different entities or are they the same? I believe, 
I believe they are. Okay, I was I was corresponding today with somebody about this. So um, we will relocation of the trail is is part of you know it will happen as part of this development. That's fine. Okay, and then finally on the performance guarantee, I believe it's the actual, you know, the, the uh, decommissioning bond, as we commonly call it. Um, we had a discussion yesterday morning about the decommissioning bond. And Diane, what we typically do is we would post a bond um, in the amount equal to closing the facility and dismantling it um, in about 30 years, plus or minus. And we would also take a five-year look at that. Every five years, we'd evaluate the economics to see if things have changed. And if necessary, revise the value of that bond to cover the closure. And it's very common in, in, in the solar business to do that. As we explained yesterday morning, uh, we can supply additional details on that. But um, we use a bond method across all of our fleet. And we take a look back every five years. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. That is I, all, Madam this, Chair. This is Kendra okay. Adam from okay. San Diego. I have some information about the um, ATV Club. It's Sanford, mm -hmm. Maine ATV Club, and we were given um, a contact, Nick Taylor, and we did reach out to him when we reached out to the um, Southern Maine Snow Goers Committee, and he just has not responded yet. Oh, thanks, Kendra. Okay. okay. Are you ready to go to the next person, Madam Chair? Yes, please. Okay, the next person would be Lenny. Hi, yeah, just a quick question. Um, this entire lot is 160 acres, is that correct? No, it's approximately 106 acres. 106 acres, acres sorry about that. And, and you're using about 20, 22 acres of it? 20, 20 acres, so... Less than 20, yeah. Yeah, so in order to not go, get into DEP permitting on this project, uh, the project had to stay below 20 acres. So that we, we we're, there's no DEP requ required because the site is under 20 acres. Okay, and that, and that land is owned by the Library Association, is that correct? Yes. Trustees okay, and of the so Library. Okay, so there's no other plans to spread that development or do anything else around that property that's going to stay pretty much vacant except for the solar farm? Um, I, I can't answer directly that. I'm, uh, you know, we've been working with Al Pollard, who is the trustee, the chair of the trusteeship, and um, we're only aware of what, what he, he's allowed us to do, if you will. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next person would be Jack. Uh-oh, you know, Jack, Jack, are you muted again? <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, yep. we can. <laughs> okay, I have nothing. My Everything seems to be working tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Tom would be next then. I have no questions or issues. And then Crystal? I do not have any questions at this time. Thank you. Um, and then Jace? Uh, no questions. And then Jennifer? I don't have any questions either. Okay. Uh, so should we move to the findings of fact then? All righty. Give me a moment. Uh-huh. Uh, Oh boy. <laughs> um, all righty, let's start with the combinations. And the only combinations that we have are the ones that are not applicable. Uh, that's 280-16-7.8. And I'm sorry, I did not do what I should have done, which was put the topic area down for each of those. So if somebody could wait just a moment. I'm going to see if I can find it. That's water supply. Um, the next one is 280-16-7.9, uh, which is sewage disposal. Um, the next one is 280-16-7.12, groundwater protection. Um, the next one is 280-16-7.6, uh, exterior lighting. 
Um, uh, come on. Um, and I'm having trouble with my computer. Just give me a second. It happens to just froze on me. Oh, no. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, uh, my, my computer has just frozen. Um, uh, does anybody else have the findings handy that you could actually read those? Um, I'm going to have to close I'm this working on, I'm, yeah, I'm working on pulling it. Oh, there we go. Yes. I have it up best. Okay. So I, which I one did you leave off? Um, I, I believe we ended at exterior lighting. Exterior lighting, okay. So 16.7.13. Can we put those up oh, that on the wasn't... screen? So do you need me, you need me to read the um, exterior lighting one? Is that what you need me to read, Beth? Did we lose Beth? Or is it me? Uh, Beth Madam. is re-entering right okay. now. I think that she might have temporarily left. Oh, so got it. Okay. Yeah, uh, she'll probably be on in just a couple of seconds now. But yes, we ended at 7.13. Okay. Were you going to say something, Diane? Yeah, it shows up my findings of facts that exterior lighting 280-16-7.13 is a uh, met with condition. It's not a not, a not applicable one. Yeah, I see that as well. Beth said it prior to her get it left off. I don't know if she made a mistake. The next one would be 7.14 solid waste disposal. That's correct. And then you have uh, Shoreland. Shoreland relationship, and that is the last of NA. Yep. Does that help, Madam Chair? Yes, thank you. Back. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. Okay. No worries. I got, I got booted out. Um, okay, so where do we leave things with the findings of fact? Um, so you left off at exterior lighting, but we were uh, discussing that that uh, was a met with condition. It didn't have a uh, not applicable. Okay, and then there was solid waste disposal. Yeah. All right. So um, let's go back to landscaping for just a moment. I'm sorry, I'll have to catch up. I mean, with uh, with lighting. Yeah, you're right. So leave lighting out of that list. Uh, let's go to solid waste 280-16-7.14. Uh, shoreland relationship 280-16-7.16. Um, and I think that's it for the not applicables. Um, so uh, using the, the roll call approach, um, we're going to start with Lenny. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Oh, actually, great. Okay, approve. And then we need a second. Second. Okay. This is Jack. Thank you. Okay, and so now we have to go through the roll call. Um, uh, Lenny? Your yes. Um, Jack? Yes. Um, Tom. Yes. Uh, Crystal. Yes. Uh, Jace. Yes. Diane. Yes. And then Jennifer. Yes. 
So that's unanimous, seven to zero. Um, heading back, and I'm going to try to get back up there and see if I can keep my machine from freezing on me again. Uh, the first one is 280-16-7.1, utilization of the site. The recommendation is that the standard has been met. The explanation is uh, the, the project reflects the natural capacity of the site. Environmentally sensitive areas have been avoided. The site design and drainage will be, be uh, maintained. Motion to accept. Is that Jack? Yes. Thank you. And a second? I'll second, I'll second it. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Who was that? Diane, I'll second it. Okay. Um, and is there any discussion? If not, let's go into the voting. And so we're going to start with um, Jack this time. Yes. And then um, Tom. Yes. Um, and then uh, Crystal. Yes. And then um, Jace. Yes. And then Diane. Yes. And then uh, Jennifer. Yes. So that's unanimous seven zero. Actually, this is Lenny. I'll vote, I'll, I'll vote yes on it. Oh, I'm yes. sorry, Lenny. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> That's all right. You're all set. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So we're going on to 7.2, access to the site. Um, the recommendation is that the standard has been met. The explanation is that Route 4 has adequate capacity to accommodate traffic generated, will not uh, create hazards to vehicle, vehicular or pedestrian traffic. I need a motion. Motion to accept. This is Jack. Okay. And a second. Second. Tom. Thank you. Um, and we're going to start with Tom on the voting this time. Yes. Um, and then we go to uh, Crystal. Yes. And then we go to Jace. Yes. And then Diane. Yes. And then Lenny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and uh, Jack. Yes. And then I think that leaves Jennifer. Yes. And that's 7 0 unanimous. Let's go on to 7 uh, 280 16 7 3 access into the site. The recommendation is that the standard has been met with conditions with a stabilized entrance and requirement that no sediment from the project will be tracked onto Route 2. Access into the site will be safe and convenient, provide minimum required site distance, is located to avoid conflicts with turning movements and traffic flow, and meets maximum grade. Will not create hazards to vehicular or pedestrian traffic, and is designed to minimize impacts to the topographic and natural features of the site. Uh, do we have a motion? Motion to accept. This is Jack. Okay. Second on the call. Thank you. And this time we're going to start with Crystal. Yes. And then we're going to go to Jace. Yes. And then we're going to go to Diane. Yes. And to Lenny. Yes. And to Jack. Yes. And to Tom. Yes. And to Jennifer. Yes. That's unanimous, um, 7 0. And now we're going to go to 280 um, 16 7.4 internal vehicular circulation. The recommendation is that the standard has been met. The explanation is that the project will provide for safe movement of emergency and other vehicles on site and will prohibit vehicles from backing out onto Route 4. Is there a motion? Motion to accept, Jack. Motion to so Jack Second, Tom. Tom. Yep. And we're going to start with um, Jace this time. Yes. And Diane? Yes. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Tom? Yes. 
Crystal? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. That's unanimous, 7-0. The next one is 280-15. 16-7.5 pedestrian. Oh, we already voted on that. That was uh, that was a not not um, applicable. The next one is 280-16-7.6, uh, um, which is stormwater management. The recommendation is that the standard is met. The explanation is that adequate provisions will be made for disposal of stormwater and use the natural features of the site to dispose of stormwater without damage to streets, adjacent properties, or downstream properties. Is there a motion? Motion to accept, Jack. Second, Tom. Thank you. Uh, we're going to start with Diane this time. Yes. Lenny? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, Jack? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, Crystal? <laughs> yes. Okay, and then we've got Jace. Yes. <coughs> and Jennifer. Yes. Okay, the next one is 280-16-7.7, uh, erosion control. Um, is there a motion? Motion to accept, oh, check. <laughs> I'm sorry, who made the motion? Jack and Tom. Tom will second it. Jack and Tom. Okay, so we're going to start with Lenny this time. Uh, yes. Uh, and then we're going to go to Jack. Yes. And Tom. Yes. And Crystal. Yes, please. And Jace. Yes. Diane? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Okay. That's unanimous, 7-0. Um, um, the next one uh, is going to be 280-16-10, uh, utilities. Um, is there a motion? Motion to accept, Jen. Mo Okay. Second, Tom. Thank you. Okay, and we're going to start, um, in this case, we're going to start with Jack. Yes. And Tom? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Jace? Yes. Diane? Yes. Lenny? Yes. And um, Jennifer? Yes. Okay, that's 7-0, it's unanimous. Uh, and now we're going to go to 280-16-711, um, uh, which is natural resources. Is there a motion? Motion to accept, Jack. And second? Second, second Diane. Bob. Madam Chair, you choose. <laughs> is it going to be Tom or Diane? Got to like Diane to me. Okay, cool. Um, and in this case, we are starting with Tom. Yes. Crystal? Yes. Chase? Yes. Diane? Yes. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. That's unanimous, 7-0. Uh, the next one we're going to go to is 280-16-7.13. Uh, uh, exterior lighting. Uh, the recommendation is that the standard has been met with condition. The explanation is with provision of information required as a condition of approval, the limited exterior lighting associated with the proposed development is adequate. This is one we may want to change. My understanding is that the applicant indicated that there was no uh, exterior lighting. Um, so I'm going to suggest that this be changed to not applicable. Um, with that, uh, would somebody like to make a motion to change motion that to, to not applicable? Motion to accept. As not applicable? 
Yes, yes. it's not, not yeah. applicable. This is Jack. Okay, great. And, yep, and a second? I second that, Tom. Okay. Um, and this is, I'm sorry, I just lost track of where I was. This is exterior lighting. And so uh, the voting will start with Crystal this time. Yes. Um, and then go to Jace. Yes. Diane? Yes. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Tom? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. And that's unanimous again, 7-0. Um, the next one is 2 16 15 uh, landscaping. Um, the recommendation is that the standard is met. The explanation is that landscaping will be focused on site stabilization and prevention of erosion and sedimentation. Is there a motion? Motion to accept, Jack. Second, Tom. Okay, and we're going to start with uh, Jace this time. Yes. Diane? Yes. Uh, Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Tom? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Uh, that's unanimous, 7-0. Um, we're going to move next to 280-16-7.17. Um, um, uh, technical and financial capacity. The recommendation is that the standard is met. The explanation is the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capacity. Is there a motion? Motion to accept, Jack. Second, Tom. Okay, we're going to start with Diane. Yes. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Tom? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Jace? Yes. Di uh, and then Jennifer? Yes. And the vote is 7 0. Unanimous. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, 280 16 7 .18, buffering. The recommendation is that the standard is met. The explanation is that proposed improvements are adequately buffered with vegetation, setbacks, and the proposed seven foot, excuse me, seven foot fence. Um, is there a motion? Motion to accept, Jack. Second, Tom. Um, okay, we're gonna start with Lenny this time. Yes. Um, and we're going to go to Jack. Yes. Tom? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Jace? Yes. Diane? Yes. Lenny? Oops, I already did Lenny. Jennifer? Yes. Okay, 7 0, unanimous. Uh, the next one and the last one is airport encroachment 280 16 7.19. The recommendation is that the standard is met. The explanation is the proposal adequately addresses impacts on the airport. Motion to accept, Jack. Okay. Second. Tom. Okay, we're going to start in this case with Jack. Yes. Tom. Yes. Crystal. Yes. Jace. Yes. Diane? Yes. Lenny? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Okay. Are you prepared for a motion? Let's see if I can find it. Um, Based upon the conversation, um, this is what I would suggest as a motion. I'll read it, and then somebody is going to have to say that they are moving it, and then somebody will have to second it. The site plan, uh, the planning board unanimously accepts the information in the 
um, May 29, 2020 summary report um, and the site plan review committee's June 2nd, 2020 recommendation grants the requested waivers and finds that the proposed application for file number 11-20-R to construct a 4.41 megawatt solar project and associated improvements at the Sanford Library Association site off Country Club Road has satisfied the requirements of Chapter 280 zoning, including Section 280-16-6.7, subject to the following conditions. Um, one, that no later than June 24, 2020, unless other arrangements are made with the planning director, the applicant shall provide five copies of revised plans and documents to the planning department that adequately respond to issues raised in the review, which are part of the following conditions of approval, including adding a note to the plan, including A, adding a note to the plan that there shall be no sediment from the project tracked onto Route 4. Um, hold on just a second. I've got to, I've got to edit something. Give me just a moment, please. B, add notes, rate controlling about regarding controlling standards for the airport development zone and the 35% impervious cover limit specific specified in the watershed overlay zone to sheet two of six and sheet one of one. The notes should also identify the percent of impervious cover proposed under this site plan to compare it to the 35% limit. C, to revise note number 13 on sheet two of six and note number four on sheet one of one to reflect the latest information about vernal pools. D, to indicate where signs are proposed to be installed on the plan and provide some typical details. E, to indicate where stockpiled materials will be located on the plans. F, to correct internal inconsistencies about the percent catch for veget revegetation, including note two on the erosion control plan and in the decommissioning note. G, to revise numbering for sheet number of six. There's no number there. H, to correct internal inconsistencies in the application about the number of proposed solar panels in the approved array. I, to revise note 19 on sheet two to clarify that the contractor is no, not only required to possess a copy of the erosion control plan and details, but that it will adhere to it prior to start of construction, during construction, and until the site is permanently stabilized. Two, to clarify the anticipated term of the project. Uh, three, to document how the proposed fence conforms to the requirements that the fence is, quote, similar to and or compatible with the style of fences used within a thousand feet of property boundaries, as well as whether the fence will be visible from Country Club Road. My computer is freezing again. Um, four, to provide four training sessions for the fire department on how to safely work around the solar field and the site layout, work with the fire marshal's office to set up the session, Five, to require, revise the decommissioning notes to A, indicate how stockpiled materials will be used in decommissioning and restoration of the site, and B, to replace 80% grass coverage with 90%. Oh, my numbering just went crazy here. Hold on a second. I think that was five. I think the next one is six. Provide a performance guarantee for decommissioning, which meets the terms of the ordinance to provide for a review and adjustment of the dollar amount every five years after the start of construction to ensure that the amount is adequate to cover the total cost of decommissioning. Uh, seven, to provide a boundary survey for the property tied to an AutoCAD plan on state plan coordinates, which is acceptable to the assistant city engineer. The city recognizes that the York County Registry of Deeds remains closed to the public. The boundary survey will be completed and provided to the planning department within two weeks of reopening of the registry unless other arrangements are made with the planning director. Eight, to provide a copy of the phase one environmental assessment. Nine, to clarify the use of the proposed relocated trail, who will have access to it and provide documentation of legal arrangements, if any, to authorize the use. Ten, to submit a copy of final arrangements with CMP about connection to the grid. 11 to submit a copy of the final disposition of outstanding issues from the Public Utilities Commission, Inland Fish and Wildlife, Department of Environmental Protection, Natural Areas Program, Department of Transportation, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, if it's required, to the planning department once secured, along with a copy of the approved plans if they differ from those approved by the planning board. 
a written description of any changes and be prepared to seek an amendment to planning board approval should the agencies require modification of the plans. Filed to establish an inspection escrow fee with the Public Works Department in an amount acceptable to the Assistant City Engineer. 13, to set up a pre-construction conference with the Code Enforcement Director and the Assistant City Engineer. 14, if installation of approved, oops, hold on, cubic screen jumped. Uh, approved landscaping is not completed by September 15, 2021, the end of the growing season. The applicant shall be required to provide a performance guarantee and an amount to cover the cost of the landscape material and its installation. The guarantee shall be required to stay in force for one full growing season after installation. And 15, uh, actually, it's not and, provide the required performance guarantee associated with decommissioning and an amount acceptable to the assistant city engineer. The language of the guarantee shall call for review of the amount of the guarantee every five years from the date of approval to ensure there are adequate funds for decommissioning in conformance with ordinance standards. And finally, 16. This approval is dependent on and limited to the documents and plans contained in the application submitted and affirmed to by the applicant. No project plan or development previously approved by the planning board may be altered or modified without securing prior approval of the planning board in the form of an amendment. Provided, however, that if at any time it becomes necessary or desirable to make modifications to the development, the planning director may approve minor modifications. Any change to the approved plan shall be provided to the planning department prior to construction to evaluate whether an amendment of the approval is required. The applicant shall be aware that non-compliance with this condition may require a modification of construction elements that are not consistent with the approval, may delay release of all or portions of a performance guarantee, and may result in enforcement actions. Is there a motion, a motion to, accept? to accept? This is Jack. Okay. Uh, is there a second? We need a second before we can discuss. I second. second Tom. Tom. Okay. Is there a discussion of the motion before you want to go into voting? This is Crystal. I have a quick question. Um, in the very beginning, did you use the correct date? Um, let me go back up here. Um, maybe not. Um, I'm looking at the, uh, hold on, let me check the date. Um, let's see, the planning board summary um, was dated, oops, I'm sorry, my dog is deciding now he needs to go for a walk or he needs to go outside, which it's not going to happen. I said <laughs> I let him out before the meeting started. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, the, the memo, it, you know, yes, that summary memo was May 29th, um, and then the memo, the uh, second memo that was referenced uh, was the one from Site Plan Review Committee, and that was June 2nd. So, yes, those, those, those are the correct dates. Okay, perfect. Thank you for checking on that. I appreciate it. Happy to do so. Any other discussion? Okay. If not, we'll start voting. Tom? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Jack? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. it should have been Jace. Jace is next. So, okay, uh, so Jace is next then? Yes. Diane? Yes. Um, and then I think one, two, three. Lenny, I think I missed you, sorry. Yes. And then Jennifer? Yes. Okay, so that's unanimous. Excellent. So I believe we are all set with that agenda item. Um, and that has passed. Okay. And okay. Thank you. And I'd like to thank everyone again very much. Thank, thank you. Have you. a great night. Okay. okay. You too. Okay, um, old, so moving on, uh, we have uh, Old Business File 03-19-R, R. Pepin and Sons, Inc., care of Matthew Pepin. Um, before we get into this agenda item, I, I just want to put out there, um, really would like to push um, hard this evening and um, wrap this item up. 
Um, and if for some reason we are unable to get through um, all of this um, in the remaining time that we have for the meeting, I am going to ask uh, the board to consider scheduling a special meeting so we can um, get through this agenda item. Um, so with that, I also um, just want to um, remind everybody um, kind of the approach that we'll use. I know we have a number of, of topics that we need to get through on, on this particular agenda item. Um, and I will remind uh, the applicant as well as the board that um, the applicant has already um, made a, uh, a couple presentations um, at prior meetings. Um, so in the interest of time, um, I would like to um, start right in on the topics. And then um, we'll have Beth do an introduction um, and any updates on the topic item. And then I'll ask if the applicant has any additional new information um, that they would like to provide. We'll give um, two minutes, a um, couple minutes for that, and then um, we'll go into board deliberations on each topic. Um, so with that, uh, are there any questions on the approach for this evening? No, it sounds good. Okay. So Beth, uh, why don't we jump in then and I'll just ask uh, Matt or are, are you with us this evening I think I saw you on but just want to confirm oh no Matt Pepin oh it looks like he's on mute um, I'm asking him to unmute but there we go hello Hi, you thank okay. you, Matt. Just yep, we can hear you now. Just wanted to make, make sure we had you with us, and uh, we'll we'll get into it. And uh, at this point, so with that, then Beth, why don't you uh, start us off um, with your introduction, please? Sure. Um, I'm trying to find my notes on this. Um, so. Uh, the board did review this issue uh, two meetings ago, um, but at the end of the meeting, it became um, clear that the applicant had not had a chance to offer um, a couple of uh, a couple minutes of direct comment on the topic. Um, and uh, uh, and so the board decided they wanted to uh, reconsider this issue. Um, uh, based upon the presentation that was uh, given uh, and discussion that the presentation that was given by the applicant um, about the impact of uh, hall rows and stockpiles, um, I did uh, revise um, the recommendation, which, which by the way, the, uh, the site plan review committee unanimously recommended um, not exceeding the, um, the 15 acres. Um, but based upon um, the conversation at the planning board meeting the following day after the site plan review committee recommendation, I did um, uh, re propose a revision to that recommendation to allow in addition to the 15 acres, 25% of the acreage of the existing hall roads. Um, at the last meeting, the applicant suggested that I had suggested a 25% increase over the 15 acres and I want to confirm that is not the case. Um, I recommended 25% uh, additional, 25% uh, of the amount of area that's open for haul roads, which I believe the applicant indicated was about 4.5 acres. Um, and so uh, if you uh, were to run that calculation, if it actually is 4.5 acres times 25%, that would add another one uh, 1.125 acres. So let's round that up and, and, and say something on the order of um, plus 15 acres. That would come to about um, 16 and a quarter acres, let's say. Um, the last part of that uh, is that uh, the planning board should confirm the figure about the amount of open acreage with the, uh, the open uh, haul road acreage with the applicant. Um, and, reply, and require the applicant to reclaim the nearly um, 
five acres. In this case, it would be a little bit less than that. It would be 3.75 acres that exceeds that limit within six months of the planning board's approval of the uh, five-year permit. Other than, other than that additional 25% associated with the Hall Road, the rest of the recommendation is consistent with what the uh, Site Plan Review Committee uh, unanimously uh, recommended. Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay. Nope, that's it. Uh, okay. Matt, is there uh, any new information uh, that you would like to add to this topic before the board deliberates? I think you're still on mute, Matt. Okay. Um, Hello. Hello. Ed, you hi. Me? Yep, we can okay. hear you. Do you have anything new that you would like to add? Uh, yeah, I would just like to add that um, we have, we have hired a, an attorney at this point, and our attorney called the planning director today um, to notify the director that we are requesting um, that the vote not formally take place tonight, so that we can be given more time to look at the legal merit and. Um, some of the application. Um, we think that we're being treated unfairly in some ways, and um, we basically uh, had the attorney notify the planning department today um, that we would not like the vote to happen today. We would like to delay to at least one more meeting so that we can fully address the legality of um, some of the issues at hand. Uh, so, Beth, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, I, I don't believe the intention of today's meeting is to um, take a vote per se. Rather, uh, the intention of the, the meeting today is that um, to provide you clear direction um, about each of the issues that are associated to your application. Um, and then set a date by which um, you would then have your revised materials submitted um, back to uh, the planning board um, for for then a meeting to take place based on your revised application. Beth, correct me, did I misstate anything? Nope, that's accurate. Okay. Does that help uh, answer your question, Matt, or? Um, it does help. I think that we were hoping that um, we'd be able to have our attorney shed light on a kind of a few issues um, that are pretty important to us before there was any kind of vote, even a vote that um, to provide um, direction, I would say. Um, we're hoping before that vote took place that we would get another two weeks to kind of consult with our attorney a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so, Beth, I, I am going to rely on uh, what your guidance is in this situation. Um, I think that this review has been going on for um, a year, um, and there was ample time to draw an attorney in, um, and I think there still is time to draw an attorney in. Um, I have heard, um, well... I understand that there's fatigue about uh, continuing, uh, ongoing, uh, continuing review of this application without resolution. Um, the decision is clearly up to the board. Um, I'm not an attorney, but I don't think that you will um, uh, be compromising yourself if you continue with this review this evening and provide direction to the applicant. Uh, you can always reconsider something at the next meeting. Um, you can also decide that you want to table the item now without any further discussion and just have the, um, the applicant, uh, have the applicant's attorney provide some direction. Um, it's unfortunate that he waited until the last minute to reach out to me. Um, you know, you guys can go wherever you want to go with this. I think you can do either approach would be thought well within your authority. Okay, thank you, Beth. I appreciate that. Um, so thank with you. that, I'm actually um, going to pose this question to the board, um, how, how you would like to handle it. Um, should we continue on with um, our discussion and review of the topics this evening? Um, or 
would the board prefer to table this um, until such time the applicant's attorney um, would be able to attend? I, I'll um, just, you know, just yeah. we want to kind of do a free for all if anyone wants to jump in with well, their thoughts or comments. We could go around. Um, it would start with Chris okay. with this case. Let's do that. Thank you, Beth. Crystal? Um, I'm not sure what the correct answer would be at this point. It seems as though um, can we pass me for a second? Let me think about it a little more. Is that possible? Hey, is, yep. this is Jace. I'll uh, step in because I'm next. Um, yep, I'd be you're next, too. I'd rather just table it rather than waste the time um, discussing something only to have some other, you know, the proposal change completely and waste the time discussing it. That's just my personal opinion. That's what, that's exactly what I was almost thinking, but I wasn't quite sure. So since you brought it up, Jace, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. Tabling it sounds like it sounds good. Diane? I have one question to Beth, if I may, Madam Chair. What time were you notified about um, Mr. Pepin's um, email? Uh, you mean the, the phone call? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I, when he just said it. I, I did not check my, my messages um, at the end of the day. My preferences to push on with the meeting um that's where i want to go um the next person is lenny hi uh, yeah i think my preference would be to continue the discussion um as it was established on the agenda um i haven't seen any reason not to continue yet jack yeah i think we need to do, continue this the uh, discussion. And Tom? Well, I want to get through this and get it done. If we're going to go back and revisit these same items again, ask for more input, that is not a very good use of time. So I would recommend tabling it. And uh, Jennifer? I'm, I would like to continue on um, with our review. So based upon what I just heard, um, uh, four people want to continue. Uh, that would be Diane, Lenny, Jack, and Jennifer. And uh, three are suggesting tabling. Uh, that would be uh, Crystal, Jace, and Tom. Your choice, Correct. Madam Chair, unless somebody wants to just jump in with a tabling motion, which cannot be discussed once the motion is made. It's just a straight up or down vote. Excuse me, Beth uh, and Madam Chair. I see Lenny has raised his hand. Uh, do you have something to say? Oh, thank you. Yeah, just a comment. If we're not voting on this tonight, so I don't see why um, having a discussion and providing some guidance to the applicant would be would be an issue again there's no final decision being made tonight i agree with you lenny let's uh you know we've taken a vote um based on the majority of the vote uh the, the board would like to continue on uh with the discussion uh, we'll see how it goes. If it becomes apparent, we need to um, table further discussions. We we can make that determination. But let's let's see where we get with this. So the topic in front of you is uh, the amount of open area. Um, you know, there's been a fair amount of material provided on this. Um, uh, uh, I guess the next step would be to step into um, questions or discussion about this specific topic. Um, and I think it starts with Jace. 
Do you have any comments, Jace? Nope. And the next person would be Diane. Uh, yeah. Um, based on your the calculations that you said previously, Beth, um, 16 and a quarter acres, is that correct? For that's open area? approximate. That's, that's assuming that um, there's four and a half acres of Hall Road open. And my recommendation was that you actually have the applicant confirm how many acres of Hall Road are open so that you can actually perform that calculation. Uh, can he do that tonight? Probably not. I mean, he might be able to give any to give it more accurately. Probably not, but you certainly could ask him. Um, you simply could make the motion that it's twenty five. It's fifteen acres plus the twenty five percent of the of the open existing hall roads, and require him to come back with that calculation um, as part of the revised materials that would come in. Okay, then I'd like to make that motion because I'd like to hear those calculations from the applicant. Okay. Do you want to hold off on making the motion until everybody weighs in and then make a motion at that point? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so after, Di anything else, Diane? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. The next one is Lenny. Yeah, I just like to say I agree with the calculation, the way you put it forward. Um, you're looking at like a little over 16 acres. And I, I agree with that uh, that calculation. Okay. And the next one um, would be Jack. Yeah, I agree with that calculation. And the next one would be Tom. I have no issues. Meaning you support the motion or you support the recommendation or that you um, don't have an opinion yeah. on the recommendation. I'm trying to get clear. Which one? I, I'm good with it. I'm good with the recommendation. Okay, good. Um, and the next one would be Tom. Um, excuse me, the next one would be Crystal. I'm, I'm good with the recommendation. And I think that leaves, if I got everybody, one, two, three, four, five, six, Jennifer. Yeah, I also support the recommendation. Okay. Um, so that is, uh, Jace did not weigh in one way or the other. Um, do you want to go back through now and have a vote? Or um, is that, are you going to assume that that's a six? Oh, or six one. Chase, do you want to weigh in one way or the other? I'm okay with the recommendation. Okay with the recommendation. Okay. Um, so that would be pretty much that's that's seven zero. So it's unanimous on that one. Uh -huh. Okay. Are you prepared to go to the next topic area? Yes, please let's. Okay. I'm gonna. Uh, so I just want to note it's seven to fifty three. Um, we're moving on to depth of excavation above the seasonal high water table. Um, again, um, the site plan review committee recommendation, which was unanimously um, adopted, is that um, given the fact that the applicant violated the two foot buffer above the minimum standard of five feet above the seasonal high water table in multiple places with at least one extending into the seasonal high water table and the potential for another half foot increase in elevation of seasonal high water table under the proposed permit. The site plan review committee unanimously recommended that the planning board continue to require a six foot minimum distance above the elevation contours in a revised reclamation plan and require the removal of all statements in the submission about the actual or anticipated rise in the seasonal high water table that are not supported by a stamped statement from the applicant's hydrogeologist as the applicant was not, uh, let's see. Um, that, that is it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm tripping over my words here, but yeah, that essentially is my update. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, um, uh, 
Do you want to start going through and asking people's, oh, no, excuse me, Matt needs to have an opportunity to, to make a brief comment. Yeah, I don't know if Matt has anything you'd like to add for this one. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, um, yeah, my comments are that um, I'll have to go back and look at it more specifically, but um, it was 4.5 acres was the stockpile and the haul roads. Um, so if you take 25% of that, that's about one additional acre that's granted to us. Um, we were honestly hoping that you guys would be able to work with us and, and give us maybe another three or four acres to work on. Um, We've, we've come here and we've kind of explained to everybody, um, you know, how we're kind of making different materials out there. And I do see in uh, Beth's memo that she kind of cites that we're doing a lot of more manufacturing versus basic mineral extraction. And really we're not doing anything different than we've done before. We're processing materials and we need different types of materials for our company here, precast company especially, and more acreage. Um, and the other thing up is that um, six months to reclaim the addition like this we have open is, is not long enough. I've that multiple times, and it's something I really like to talk to the board members about more because um, it's a very tight window to perform that kind of work. Um, okay, just to clarify, we are uh, uh, on the topic of depth of excavation above the seasonal high water table. Um, but we'll we'll take those comments into uh, consideration for that previous topic. Okay, yeah, I didn't get to talk about open acreage. Uh, I don't believe so, um, but I, I want to some comments related to that. Um, could I have a few minutes to talk about depth of activation very quickly? Uh, yeah, Beth, will you give us a, a, a two-minute warning, please? Or yes. will you just let us know in two minutes? Thank you. Yep. My, my big point about this is that um, we've seen the recommendation from um, Beth and from others that we need to be six feet above the, the height um, going forward. We just need clarification from the board that that's going to be in areas that we develop in the future. Because if we have to go back to the 20 or 30 acres we've already developed and raise the elevation of foot in all the areas and areas we've already reclaimed, then that will be an exponential amount of money and time and effort, and we're going to have to rip out what we've already reclaimed to bring the grades up. Um, so just want to make sure that, that we understand this in between the six foot being in is about to go in versus the areas that we're in, and the, the water level has risen out there, and that's why we're we're at where we are. Um, it's risen over time out there, but we're still within that five foot limitation where we've already developed. Um, so the six feet standard has to be for new areas. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay so the discussion would start with Diane. Um, can Dave Parent weigh in on his comment about um, excavating in the new area as opposed to ripping everything out? Yeah, I, I don't see Dave um, on the list. I, I kind of expected him by now. Um, I'm, I'm here. here. Yay. Okay. All right, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I think what Matt was saying is there's areas of the pit that have been reclaimed that perhaps aren't, uh, aren't six feet above the seasonal high water table, but are five feet above the seasonal high water table. And I, I think the concerns of, of the board are, are more to give that extra foot for a buffer um, as he's excavating areas of the pit, um, so so he if he does go a little deep, he doesn't um, doesn't get within that five foot buffer. So I, I guess I would agree that if an area has been reclaimed and it it meets the minimum five foot standard, I I would not expect him to go in and, and fill that in um, and then reclaim on top of that. I, I wouldn't think that'd be necessary because he has the five feet there. Um, am I understanding that correctly, Beth? Um, well, I, I think you've added a, a, an interesting twist in there, Matt, because you're saying, you're, you're specifically saying that if it's been reclaimed, um, uh, you know, the question is uh, where 
if it's been reclaimed but it's in violation below that five foot um is the board going to expect um some sort of um remediation um so i think oh, that's court the, yeah and I, I i don't think that's the case i i think it's a he, they have reclaimed areas that that do meet the five foot minimum standard um it, I believe that's what he's saying. He doesn't want to go back okay. into already reclaimed areas and add soil to that and then have to reclaim it again. If yep. I'm understanding that correctly, I agree with that. It's just where he's actively doing more excavation. Um, I, I, I believe the board wanted a little more of a buffer. And I, if, if I remember right, I think Matt was agreeable to that. Yeah. Diane, and Diane, you asked that question, correct? Yes, I did. Um, I agree with what um, Mr. Parent says. Um, so, it's, if he's if he's meeting um, the the buffer and he's not got a violation, leave it be, and I'll agree with the recommendations of the uh, site plan review board. Okay, so the next person would be Lenny. So yeah, I would agree with the recommendation of the site plan committee and, and that it should be applied to the, you know, the areas of the pit that haven't been reclaimed yet. Okay, and then the next one would be Jack. I'm okay with the six feet. Is that in all areas, Jack, or um, just in the new areas? No, just in the new areas. Anything he's reclaimed, okay. I don't think we can go back and make him fill it in. Unless it's below five feet? No, if it's been reclaimed, it's reclaimed. Anything new okay. needs to be at six yep. feet. Okay, and then Tom? I'm the same as Jack. I, anything that's new needs to be reclaimed to the seven to the six feet. Um, if it's already been reclaimed, it, we're going to now get into a counterproductive uh, activity, I think. Okay. Crystal? I'm in agreement with, um, with um, Tom and Jack. Okay. Jay? In agreement with the three prior. Okay. And Jennifer. Yeah, I'm in agreement. Six foot uh, for new stuff. Anything that's been reclaimed, um, as long as it's been reclaimed to the five foot, if there's anything um, outside of that, it should be reclaimed to at least the five foot. Okay. Good. So it sounds to me like there's pretty consistent um, uh, feeling among the board on this topic area. I would agree. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All righty. So let's move to the next one, which is reclamation. Uh, hold on. I'm doing multiple things here. So we're at 804. We're actually doing pretty well on time. Um, so, uh, the uh let's see where are we um this is also an item that the board uh discussed two meetings ago and and voted on uh or expressed a sort of the position on supporting the site plan review committee's recommendation realized at the end of the meeting that matt had um not been given an opportunity to weigh in on that particular topic and so you decided you wanted to come back and talk about that issue again um the site plan review committee's recommendation is that at a minimum, the planning board should require either a reclamation schedule or limit the opening of new acreage to the number of acres reclaimed in the previous year. Furthermore, the planning board could decide, decide whether the minimal stabilization of the exposed area with grass is adequate and whether the applicant should be required to provide more detail about proposed planting of woody vegetation 
Um, the applicant has provided new information on that. It was at the site plan review committee. Um, apparently the landowner expressed interest, and Matt can speak to this more directly, um, has expressed interest in having a grass surface with um, potentially trees along the slopes. Um, uh, at this point, what is proposed is essentially just a grass surface. And that's all I had if you wanted to open that up. For, yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll open it up to Matt real quick if there's anything new he would like to add. Uh, I just want to add that uh, once again, you know, we've worked very closely with the landowners out there. Um, I think we've done a great job with reclamation so far. Um, we have been putting trees, pine trees. We've been planting those on the slope. Um, we've done that voluntarily. Um, it was not part of our original approval. Um, we're continuing to do that. That's the landowner out there. Um, again, uh, David Paul is a, is a farmer and some of these other guys would prefer a grass field um, at, at kind of the flat areas. Um, but Dave does seem to like, you know, when we put trees on the slopes um, and we like doing it too. Um, so currently, um, again, we're not required to do it, but we're working with the landowner to take care of that. Um, and I think if you look at our reclamation, we, we do a really great job of that. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, so with that, then let's open it up to the board for discussion. So Lenny is first. Okay, it doesn't sound like there's any disagreement on that to me. It sounds like everybody is okay with either the trees on there and grass. Am I wrong? Well, there's nothing in the plan um, that discusses the trees. The applicant is asking to not be bound to identify the locations and, the, and provide a planting schedule um, and just to allow them to put the trees in if they decide, if they decide they'd like to. I don't know if it's me breaking up or if it's you, Beth. Did anyone else hear Beth break up? No. Okay, nope, that must be you. my phone. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Mine's been misbehaving all day, so I wouldn't have been surprised if it was me. So did you want me to repeat that? So I just so it sounds like we need to add that to the plan. Is that what you're is that what you're looking for? I, I basically, if somebody is proposing to landscape um, in the site plan, we ask them to tell us where they're going to put stuff and to give us a planting schedule. Matt has come back and said, fine, I'm not going to propose to put trees in there. I'm going to just do grass. Um, uh, the question is, are you going to be comfortable with him just going in and putting trees in without having made a commitment to do it? Um, it's entirely up to you which way you want to go on this. Is there any benefit to the uh, to the slopes having the trees on there? Uh, well, um, if the slopes are fully stabilized and uh, with the angle and um, there's um, a 90% catch of grass, which is what's required. Um, they probably won't shift an awful lot. Um, Mike is certainly in the audience and can speak to that issue uh, probably better than I can. Um, uh, the question is uh, whether you are looking for uh, woody vegetation when the applicant walks away from the site. Um, if you don't plant the woody vegetation, it's likely to um, uh, ultimately seed itself um, in sort of normal, you know, sort of pioneer fashion. Um, but typically it takes an awful lot longer for the woody vegetation to get established if you just let nature take its course. I'm not sure that that's what's being proposed by the applicant either. Um, but you might want to ask Mike to weigh in on that about whether there is benefit to having trees on the slope. You know, you have to think about multiple things. Erosion control and water quality is one aspect of it. Another part of it is um, aesthetics and another part of it is um, uh, whether that encourages or discourages um, uh, development of the site in the future, re redevelopment of the site. So. 
I guess I'm just I'm concerned about what's in the best interest of the I guess environmental interests. So in that case, I think what you're talking about primarily are issues of erosion control and water quality, and so you might want to direct that question to Mike. Is Mike there? Yes, I am. Um, I don't think it matters uh, either way. Um, I uh, I think the board first uh, kind of sees this question uh, between grass and grass or trees and shrubs and other things there. And it, it uh, originally started, I, in my impression, it, this whole discussion started in what is the thing going to look like? Uh, and I, I think it really doesn't matter if there's a good job on uh, on stabilizing the site with grass, uh, it should be okay. And a two and a half to one slope or, or actually uh, flatter in, in the Pepin's uh, case. But, uh, you know, I, I think either way, uh, it's going to be a little difficult at first if it does erode. Uh, uh, the, the erosion will go down the bottom of the pit. It's not going to go any water body for the most part. Uh, it's, it would be just uh, what would you like it to look like is the way I remember this being discussed originally. Uh, and I wouldn't have a preference as far as erosion uh, and erosion control sediment going off the site. 99% uh, of the time, uh, that won't be an issue. Okay, so what's Matt's disagreement with not having this on the plan? Can he speak to that? I don't think he wants. Matt, if you want to speak to that. Yep. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Um, so, Lenny, um, I, I, I think that I think in this case that trees would be good along. If you're looking at the site plan, I think along Twombly Road would be probably the best place to have trees um, because that's really the only road that you can is sort of exposed to the gravel pit operation. Um, we've been planting a lot of trees along Twombly Road primarily. Um, and it, you know, I guess it doesn't really block view much, but, you know, it's just maybe a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, I think we'd certainly be willing to formally say to the board that, you know, along that slope along Twombly Road that, you know, we'd be willing to plant some pine trees in that area. Um, we might not want to have to be required to plant trees on every slope throughout the pit because um, it's just a lot. That's a, a, a massive quantity of trees, um, probably more than we can afford. Um, so generally, you know, we've been working along Twombly Road um, where we've been planting, and that, that seems to be a good spot to do it. I don't think that we'd be required to do it throughout the entire pit. Does that answer your question, Lenny? Yes, it does. Okay. Do you have, have a any... position on the topic? <laughs> uh, I don't have anything else. Do you have a position? Okay. Okay, good. Um, so the next person would be Jack. Yeah, if they want to plant pine trees, that's fine. Um, as long as they specify where they're going to plant them. I mean generally beech trees come in the first if you leave a, a spot vacant pine trees are one of the last ones to come up okay um so the next person would be tom i have no issues with trees okay and then crystal Um, I have no issues with the trees. Okay, and then um, Jace. I have no issues with the trees, um, but you know, I think one of the things that they're asking is whether or not to be required to specify where, what quantity, and so forth but if we're all set if we were okay with it being grass i'm okay with them you know playing trees wherever they want if that's the case so i um i don't feel it needs to be made a requirement okay and jennifer um so I think there was a kind of a couple of different points in here. Um, 
in regards to the trees, um, I think it would be nice if there was some um, witty vegetation in there. Um, do I think it needs to be, should it be required? Um, I don't think it necessarily specific needs to in this case. Um, if they want to include those, I think that would be great to um, show that as part of their plan, what they do want to include. Um, and then I think the other part of this question was about opening, opening new acreage um, until reclaimed acreage um, equal to that amount before they would allow to be open more. Um, so I would be supportive of that direction as well. So I forgot Diane. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I have no problem with the pine trees or the grass or even some woody vegetation. I'd like to see some. Um, I still want to see um, a schedule and a plan that he provides. So um, I forgot I should have probably tried to get you to weigh in on this, but we fo your conversation focused primarily on the trees. What about the rest of the, uh, what about the site plan uh, review committee's recommendation? Um, asking for a reclamation schedule or limiting acreage. The only person who seemed to weigh in on that was, um, was Jennifer. I wanna go back quickly and just see if anybody, uh, see what people's are, uh, reactions are to that um, recommendation. Uh, this is Lenny? Diane. I... Oh, Diane? Sorry. Yeah. No, go My ahead, apologies. Diane. You're... So, yep, go for it. Um, I agree with Jennifer's um, statement. I'd like to see it as well. Okay, Lenny? Yeah, I agree with the recommendation on that. Um, Jack? Yep. I'm okay with the site plan. Tom? I'm good with the recommendation. Crystal? I'm, I'm okay with the recommendation. Um, Jace? All set with the recommendation. Okay, so it sounds pretty consistent. Um, there was a little bit of variation on the tree aspect um, with, uh, and so Matt, I think you'll have to, you know, if you do want to add those trees, I'd recommend doing it. It'll make it smoother to go through things. If not, then this issue is going to have to be finalized with the board when you come back. Okay. Ready to move on to the next? Yeah, yeah. let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next one is over excavation of slopes. Um, and um, uh, let me go back here. Okay. Um, so this has been um, a difficult conversation for some time. Um, um, the I would just do want to remember remind the board that no new over excavation of slopes had been approved in any of the four gravel pits that were um, reviewed and approved over the last three years, including the Daylight Ave pit, which is immediately contiguous to this property and is going to share um, in, a, um, in the boundary agreement that says that you don't have to respect the setback um, because there's a, common, there's a common line there. Um, uh, two of those four were in uh, public water supply protection areas. The other two are not, but they, uh, including the Daylight Ave one. Um, and um, let's see, um, I do want to correct a misre uh, an issue that was raised by the applicant at the last meeting that the parent has no problem um, with the over excavation of slopes. I do want to point out that they voted with all of the other site plan review committee members um, and made an in, you know made a statement with regard to his position about public water supplies versus the standard of approval that the board meets with. 
the planning board's recommendation was that given, uh, excuse me, the site plan review committee's recommendation was that given, given past precedent, especially on the contiguous daylight ave pit, the fact that while over excavated slopes may include only a small percentage of the site, that small percentage will translate into significant acreage and the risk of contaminating and or changing the hydrogeologic regime of the area. Um, the site plan review committee recommended that the planning board not allow continued over excavation of slopes in this new five year permit. And if the board does decide to allow over excavation and filling of over excavated slopes, it should make it clear that the filling needs to be done with material of similar size and chemical composition sourced from some, from elsewhere on the site. And that's for the existing over excavated slopes. That should be more clear. So that was the recommendation. Um, this point, that's all I have to say, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Beth. Uh, Matt, anything you would like to add? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd really like to add that at the very beginning of this, we looked at this issue and Beth had Dave Perrin contact two of the lead um, hydrogeologists and geologists, I guess the hydrogeologists two of the lead authorities in the state on this, and there's a statement in, in Dave's um, letter to everybody that these two people confirmed that this really would not affect the groundwater. Um, they did not recommend that it was done in an area, um, you know, inside a wellhead protection zone, but we're well outside of that zone. And this letter clearly indicated that the says that it really won't affect the groundwater. Um, this is something, I understand that there's such hits that, that, you know, we denied the ability to do this, but any of did we just say to do this five years ago? And we based a lot of what we're doing on there on this. Um, we And again, the, the, you know, the study that Dave showed really showed that it, it will affect the groundwater. Um, the other thing to talk about is the 200 limitation, that's the conversation for excavation of slopes. Uh, 200 feet of, of open environment is impossible to follow, um, especially when you have an abutting pit owner, uh, the nest right next door. There's no way that you can only have 200 feet open because they need to dig this aside. Um, there's no reclamation going on. And I I, I think it, it just goes to show you, you can't run a, a specific feet. And when I've asked the planning director multiple times why this two specific thing is being talked about, she says that she understands it was imposed reason. But I've got um, really no clear direction on what those thoughts or what the concern is so I can try to address the concern for the planning board. And I'd really like to know what the concern is with the 200 feet, you know, having more than that open so that I can adequately address it. Um, but I'm saying that as a gravel pit operator, it's impossible to operate an operation like this with only 200 feet of open embankment. Um, and, and really, again, I, I want to say that when we're talking about filling in these slopes, we specified that we're only going to use gravel and silty sand. And these are, these are materials that are found right on site they're clean, they drain well, um, and we specified that right in our operations manual. The only thing we will use to fill the slopes in are gravels and silty sands, and those materials are found right on site. Um, so we're not we're not just putting junk in slopes, we're putting different materials in those slopes. Um, it's very important to us operational. Madam Chair, do you okay. want to... Um, See if Dave Parent would like to make a comment. Uh, yes, please, uh, Dave, if if you wouldn't mind. Yes, I'm I'm here. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so this this issue has dragged on quite a while, and at one point uh, Beth asked me if. I would look into it. So I, so I did to the uh, issue of the, the drinking water and the water underneath the pit. So the two people I brought in were uh, Dr. Robert Marvini and uh, Dr. Ryan Gordon, both of whom I know. I explained to them what was going on and asked them if they'd sit down and meet with us. So they, they did. They came to Sanford and uh, God, we met for, I don't know, at least a couple hours. And I, I had some phone conversations with them. So they both said that had this been in a wellhead zone, 
the the changes that well two things happen first if you're in a wellhead zone of a public water supply the groundwater moves much faster underneath your uh, underneath your, your your excavation your gravel pit um, so any contamination that might happen in the soils would move towards a public water supply um, as opposed to this which isn't in a wellhead protection zone the groundwater slowly moves down towards the river the other thing with a public water supply is any change any minor change the water quality such as, as ph um, anything that would add more mineral content such as uh, iron manganese arsenic to the water even small changes would impact us um, would be an issue um, when it's not in a wellhead zone you're not quite as worried about those changes so they both said that if this wasn't a public um, wellhead protection zone they would not want the the over excavation to happen but given that it wasn't and and I, i'm going to give you the short version we actually had an event there several years back that, that sort of gave us somewhat of a tracer study and showed us what was happening to the uh, to the groundwater and it is moving towards the river. They were pretty confident that over excavating, filling in the slopes with on-site material, which which is what Pepin's been doing out there, um, would not create a, a risk to the to the groundwater underneath there from a groundwater quality perspective. Um, so it, it really, I, I don't, I agree with their opinion, but it's really the opinion of, of Dr. Marvini and Dr. Gordon that you want to take. They're the experts in the field. Um, when it comes to, to me as a site plan review committee member, um, I have to look at things other than drinking water, even though I'd rather not. And there was a lot of other discussion about other issues with the over excavation that, that Beth had mentioned. And in the end, I, I voted along with the rest of the committee um, to the recommendation that you received. So as far as drinking water quality, I agree. It will not affect that. And, and I, I think we, we felt it was a, a policy decision that the planning board should look at um, and, and should discuss. Um, and, and we gave our recommendation um, because that, that's what have, has been done in recent years. But again, thought that, that if an exception to that was to be made, it would be up to the planning board to do that, not the site plan review committee. Um, we, we felt we should stay consistent. Um, did, it, am I right in saying that, Beth? Um, is that accurate? I had muted myself. <laughs> um, I think that's that's fairly accurate. Um, you know, as as I uh, pointed out to the board um, and to the site plan review committee, there are other aspects of groundwater um, than just public drinking water supplies. There's um, there's the smaller water supply systems, the the uh, the uh, um, individual homeowner uh, or an individual user's well that doesn't reach to the level of a classification as a public drinking water supply or even a community drinking water supply. Nevertheless, it's, it's critically important to uh, those property owners. Um, there's also a role of groundwater associated with providing uh, what's called base flow um, to various environmental characteristics, whether that's streams, ponds, wetlands, bogs, um, so that this, this standard that the planning board is um, looking at around groundwater protection goes beyond just drinking water supplies. Um, and so, and I think that was part and parcel of what went into the site plan review committee's considerations as well. Yeah, and my, my uh, letter is somewhere in the, uh, I don't know how many of hundreds of pages you have now on, on this application, but it is in there and I can provide it separately if you want. Um, but to summarize it, what Matt said was exactly right. It, it says that in their opinion, it will not affect the, uh, the water quality, groundwater quality um, significantly underneath that site from, from a drinking water perspective. Um, I'd have to go back and read it through to get the exact language that, that was used, but uh, 
but it's it's pretty specific and and what Matt is representing is correct. Okay. So are, are you ready, Jennifer, or do you want to pursue this further? Do you want to, are you ready to have planning board weigh in? Yes, let's please have the planning board weigh in now. Okay. So Jack, any the additional I'm sorry. So, so is this something we require of all gravel pits? You have for the last four years. Then I'm okay with requiring for this one. Um, Tom. Uh, I'm trying to understand. Okay. Yeah, I get it. We, we require it. Let's be consistent. Why do we require it? Are we protecting public water drinking supplies? Are we protecting swamps or bogs or other habitats? Or we what what is it we're protecting? Because a lot of the right up here talks basically just the public water. Um, and if we're going to consider other things, that's fine. But I want to make sure that we're consistently coming up with our decisions as well as consistently applying those decisions across the board. Um, so, and I would also be interested in what do the experts, what did their experts report say? Was it only speaking to public water supplies or was it speaking to groundwater as a general topic? Yep. Yeah, I, I can talk a little on that. I, as I remember, they were talking about, about the water quality um, in general underneath it. They, if it had been a public water, um, well had protection area, they would not have felt that it was a proper thing to do. It is not. Um, we, we actually showed them where the, the private uh, wells were around it. They did not think it would be an issue to the, uh, the private wells around it, uh, nor in general to the drinking water quality under the pit. One of the uh, scenarios that we talked about uh, was the possibility that there may be house lots in there someday and they did not think it would affect the, the water quality for any private wells that would go in there in the future. Um, I, I, I think it's more that there's other concerns as Beth mentioned um, and that we just have not allowed it in recent years. Does, does that answer the question? It does. I, uh, I'm just, I'm just, trying to question the requirements is to, you know, are, are we, I get it, the requirements there, are we applying and we want to make sure we apply the requirement evenly across the whole playing field. I'm just trying to understand why the requirements there and making sure that we're, we're uh, protecting what needs to be protected and we're not over uh, applying. Um, so, and maybe this is not really a discussion for this application because it is more of a it's a standard change versus a uh, specific application. So this, uh, this is Beth. I'll, I'll just sort of weigh in. The the standard in the ordinance is is relatively vague, and that's part of the issue. Um, the groundwater protection standard uh, reads as follows. The proposed site development and use shall not adversely impact either the quality or quantity of groundwater available to public abutting properties or public water supply systems. So it's your interpretation as, as to what that standard means. All right. Well, then I would say that if the experts right now are weighing in saying that it does not impact those things, then then the over excavation is okay. Okay. Um, the next person would be Crystal. Yeah, I, I think the, um, I'm in agreement with Tom taking everything into consideration. It's a good question. Okay, Jace. I'm uh, in agreement with uh, 
Tom, I haven't seen any evidence uh, otherwise to show that it would uh, impact. Okay. Um, Diane? Um, I'm going the exact opposite. I'm going to take the recommendation of the site plan review and not allow the uh, over excavation of slopes. Um, Lenny? Yeah, I would agree with the recommendation of the site plan review committee. Um, I think we need to be consistent in our approval process. And did I start with Jack? Uh, yeah, I think I did start with Jack. So Jennifer, you would be the last one. Yeah. I'm also in agreement with the recommendation of the site plan review committee. Um, I would just add that if there's any current over excavation, you know, that should be filled with something of similar size, chemical composition, all that. Um, but then go forward, no new over excavation. Okay, so I think it came down four to three on this one. Um, with ja uh, Jennifer, Lenny, Diane, and Jack, please tell me if I'm wrong, uh, saying no over excavation, and Tom, Crystal, and Jace saying that you would be open over excavation yes that's, that's fair something yeah okay good all right so I, unfortunately that you know you've got a majority there um, Matt but it, it's uh, not a strong majority so you're gonna have to deal with that one as you go forward um, the next category um, is what we call other concerns and they're largely miscellaneous items um, uh, they're laid out in your memo. Um, uh, the, uh, there's some clear, some removing some language um, uh, that suggests um, that um, the seasonal, uh, let me see if I can read these, I'm sorry. So all statements regarding the amount of the seasonal high water table has risen should be removed from submission requirements unless they are made uh, in a stamp statement a, sta a statement stamped by a qualified environmental professional um, clear description of what conditions have changed since the data was present prepared um, provision of a signed copy of the proposed temporary access agreement on daylight uh, immediate payment of a performance guarantee to cover all currently open areas of the site remember it was approved for 15 we've got just under 20 that's now open so a little less than five acres are not covered by the current performance guarantee. Um, either provide the width of Old Mill Road right of way on the plan or request a waiver of the requirement, submission requirement. Um, resolve the conflict in the numbering of plan sheets so that there are no du duplicate labels for different sheets. Be aware of past complaints about the operation of the gravel pit since 2013, which was described by the Director of Code Enforcement's memo. Revise and resubmit the latest operations manual to address a number of, of issues. Um, right now, it's peppered with the applicant's rationale for why it proposes specific operations and standards. Um, those items should be removed from the operations manual to a cover letter uh, that will reduce the overall length of the document so it actually will be useful to the PID operators and city enforcement officials to label the operations manual with the most recent date of the revision, to clarify that the most recently updated hydrogeologic analysis was prepared by S.W. Cole, not R.W. Gillespie, to correct the dates of plan sheets identified on pages two and three to reflect the dates of the latest revised sheets, uh, require the applicant to notify the planning department if it encounters ledge and needs to adjust excavation so officials can make a determination as to whether an amended plan is required 
And if so, whether it should be handled at a staff or uh, level or require return to the planning board for review and approval of a revision. Um, we need the applicant statement to reflect this standard procedure. Um, Remove the statement limiting site inspections to code enforcement and DEP personnel only, and remove the statement in section 4.4, protection of on-site wetlands, indicating it has the right to remove wetlands altogether if they feel that the area will need to be utilized for operations. So those are um, largely uh, minor details. Um, uh, site plan review committee uh, recommended um, a, a approval of um, requiring that those items be addressed. Thank you, Doc. But, uh, not, is there anything you would like to add? Yeah, uh, I have no problems with any of those things that were just mentioned. I can get all that to you guys uh, right away. Uh, we look forward to hearing on the conversation more. Um, I think really what the point that was struck home here is that the big the park to, to get at what the issue is with the over excavation of the slopes without having an impact to work with. Um, we really need more information from the town and from the planning board, planning direct department, um, and the city engineer, what the real concern is. Um, case studies, possibly. Um, just anything that you can show us to, to tell us what the concern is because we really don't even know how to address it. And we want to be able to address it, but we don't have any facts behind the recommendations that are coming forward. Um, and, you know, we're, we're coming to the approval and we're following the ordinance. Um, nothing has changed with the ordinance. And it's just, it's not a very big way of going about things. And we really hope that, you know, if the town's going to look forward uh, to help us understand what the issue is. And uh, we'd like to continue to work with you guys, and uh, I thank you for your tonight. Okay, great. Thank you, Matt. Okay, uh, so Beth, why don't we open it up uh, to the board for discussion now? So I think Tom is supposed to start this one off. I have no issues under the other concerns area. I'm all set words, with everything okay that's with listed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Crystal would be next. I'm okay with the recommendation. And then uh, Jace is next. Okay with the recommendation. Diane. I'm okay with the recommendation as long as the uh, performance guarantee gets up uh to the current um acreage and then lenny um, i'll agree with all the comments that have been made so far uh jack i'm okay with the recommendations and i guess that brings us to jennifer uh, I also agree with the recommendation, and it didn't sound like the applicant had any issues with that either. Okay. So it sounds like it's pretty unanimous um, decision from you. We might get this done, guys. <laughs> um, yeah. Next topic, area, Jennifer? Yep, yeah, let's do it. Okay. So... Um, there were some unresolved issues um, related to major revisions. Um, um, so I just wanted to point these one, two, four areas out. You may or may not have concerns about any of them. Um, the, the applicant is uh, around operations. The applicant is proposing to eliminate crushing on the site, but continues to propose operating a screening plant on the Zaluka portion of the site. Um, the city engineer uh, recommended that the applicant confirm it's not proposing to operate a non-portable stationary crusher. Board may want to discuss the applicant's noise control strategies to mitigate impacts on residents of Milton Ave, Chancery Lane, and a portion of Old Mill Road. 
Um, as the majority of past complaints received by code enforcement and public works were noise related, the applicant may want to discuss the strategies it has historically used that have been most effective in managing noise and how it intends to use that experience to mitigate noise impacts on residents under the new five year permit. So really this whole issue is related to noise. The second one is um, around the topic area of security. The applicant proposes to provide a gate with a locking device near Old Mill Road entrance, but leaves the gate unlocked to provide unrestricted access for city officials and property owners. No trespassing signs are proposed to be posted around the perimeter of the pit. Uh, the third category is truck traffic. Uh, the applicant no longer proposes to operate company owned trucks on the portion of Twombly Road headed toward Margaret Chase and the school from Old Mill Road. And the last topic is the refueling area. The applicant proposes to site a refueling area in the general vicinity of the southwest portion of the site on upland, southwest of the wetland. And the question is posed as to whether the planning board should require the applicant to provide greater detail for design of the fueling area. Um, so when you talk uh, to this, and Matt, you may wanna do the same thing. Um, there are four specific areas one are the operations with respect to noise, the second one is security, the third is truck traffic, and the fourth is refueling. And you may not want to talk about all of them, it may not raise an issue to you, but I just sort of laid those out. Matt, is there anything you would like to add? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I think I'd just like to address the, uh, the, the crushing and the screening. Um, so to clarify for Mike's question, um, we will not be operating a portable crusher um, on the DeLuca parcel. Um, that is the back portion of the property um, because we were concerned about uh, noise a little bit with the proximity of entry over there. Um, we will be operating the screening back there and to mitigate noise, we've done a lot of different things in the past. We've gotten really good at it actually. Um, we, with, the, with the screening plant, we always have it located right up against the edge of an embankment so that you're really kind of down in a hole with that plant and you can't hear that plant because you're, you're buffered by that embankment of gravel, which is right next to it. Um, also, other things we've done is if there's been concerns about noise in the neighborhood from any of the neighbors, um, we haven't had any in over four, four or five years, I think. Um, but when we were first developing the pit, we had one or two and we ended up alleviating those concerns by building some stockpiles around the equipment that we were in. Um, and that's something that we could definitely do in the future if, if we were back for, you know, back in the DeLuca parcel with a screening plant. And if there was any concern about, you know, there being a little bit too much noise, we can always uh, material around the, uh, screening plant and then that really blocks a lot of the noise as well so we've got different things that we can do to mitigate the noise really the, the thing that makes the most amount of noise is the cluster um and that's why we voluntarily said you know bring it back there we won't use it back there um that it cost us a good amount of money to do that but we knew it was kind of best um the screening plant is really minimal noise wise compared to that crusher um if, the, if you look at the decibels, it'd be much lower as far as the amount of noise that it actually emits. Um, so we think that there really shouldn't be any skew um, operating the screening plant in the back portion of the site um, and being in compliance with the, with the Stanford Noise Ordinance. Um, we really have no problem um, in compliance with that whatsoever. Um, but I hope that answered all the questions. And as far as noise, security, or sorry, security and truck traffic, um, uh, I'm all set with those issues, really. Um, we've resolved those issues. Um, and we, we did kind of feel the point that we thought it'd be fair if we could use all the roads in the town, just like other businesses, but um, did, you know, try to work with the town and agreed that we would, we would stay off Columbia Road um, for, for hauling back and forth to our shop. Um, we are allowed to use a portion of Columbia Road um, as written in the operations manual, just if we have local deliveries in that area. Um, but we can't use it as a primary route. So um, we, we kind of gave up our request for that. And uh, I guess that's all I've got to say about these topics, but um, really can could reassure the board that we have a lot of ways to, to mitigate noise. Um, and we've been very successful at it in the past. Great, thank you. Okay, why don't we open it to the board uh, for discussion? Okay, Crystal?
Um, Would you like a prompt on four topic areas? Yes, please. Okay, first one is the noise related issues around operations. I don't have any questions. Um, okay. Um, the second one was around security. Sorry, I was trying to read something else at the same time. Um, I don't have any questions. Okay. The third is around uh, truck traffic, about traffic. Um, my question, and I was trying to see if it was actually addressed in some of the stuff I have, is with Margaret Chase opening, are there any concerns um, as far as school being actually open with um with the operation of the sand pit gravel pit i'm sorry so I, I think that they no longer are proposing to use the tw the portion of twombly road that heads toward the school okay perfect Try. Okay. and the last one had to do with the refueling area I don't have any questions on that either. Um, do you think the board? Do you think the board should be requiring greater detail for the fueling area? That's the, that's the question. So a yes or a no would be okay. I want to say no. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. Jace would be next. Yeah, um, no questions. Uh, I guess no comments on the first two on security. Um, my personal opinion with that is, uh, you know, they, they have to have insurance. And so, again, when it comes to man-made hazards and properly marking the property and, and so forth, uh, there's an inherent um, motivator you know, to secure the uh, pro uh, property properly. Um, so I have no concerns there. Um, I was just a little, because I wasn't, ta it wasn't talked about much, but the uh, refueling um, station, do we usually require more details or is there a requirement to require more details? We usually do ask for some basic information so that we can be assured that if there's any um, contamination, that's you know, any fuel that's that's spilled, um, that there's adequate provisions to catch and contain those spills and to keep it from going into the ground. Uh, this question or this request for more detail came from the assistant city engineer, so you may want to ask Mike um, what he's looking for. Yep, Mike, if you are willing to weigh in, it would be great. Mike, still that, Mike? I was talking away and I had my mute button on. Uh -huh. oh, sorry about that. Uh, that fueling area uh, came from the origins of the pit when uh, it was much smaller. And uh, it's it's been there, it's been on operations manuals and it appeared on my memo. And when I see things that were uh, once part of the uh, approval and then in 2013 went away, I think I phrased my memo by saying, does the board want, wish to see uh, the, uh, the that area for the for the, the fueling area because it was taken out without the board ever saying take it out it just didn't appear on the plans and I only know that because I've been here 
since the old the older approvals. So uh, as for whether it does a whole lot of good, uh, I, I think it does has some advantage if the uh, the the, uh, the well is downstream from the area that's being filled. I don't quite know how that works. Uh, we also have more monitoring wells today than we uh, did back then. Uh, up in the DeLuca parcel, we believe that will be somewhat down gradient from the way the uh, any potential uh, pollutants would head down. Uh, and so it it's still an old part of the approval. And I think I just asked if the board wanted to see it back. And that was asking a question of you folks without explaining all the ins and outs that I recall of it. It was something required by a planning board before, and I thought it was worth asking. Uh, it, it, uh, I know Dave's looked at that area, and, uh, and of course, his, uh, his, uh, one of his plants is nearby, but not in the wellhead protection zone. So I really just asked the question, and I just wanted to make sure that the board didn't still want that to happen. If Matt is willing to have it there and the board wants it to be there and that it's used properly, it could be a good thing. I don't have a strong feeling on it. I just wanted to make sure that uh, it just didn't get forgotten. Perhaps the applicant could weigh in. Go ahead. Um. Did that answer the question? Um, I forget who asked uh, the question. Dave. Dave. Jason. Thank you. Yeah. Jason, uh, thank you. For the most part, but I'm still um, on the fence on it. Yeah, if I can just say one more thing. It, I'm on the fence with it too. I just, it's just, it did get forgotten before. And I wanted to make sure it didn't get forgotten. And if we're going to have it, let's have it. If we're not going to have it, and I just would, my my aim was to make sure that the board had some understanding of that. Uh, I think the uh, the best thing I can say about it is it's uh, cross gradient, which means that the any pollutants that might be spilled may or may not go to the well. It may be kind of to the side of the well. I'm not sure how effective it is, uh, and I'm uh, frankly I'm not sure if it's used or not and I, I don't know one way or the other. I've never asked the applicant. So I have a mixed no, bag on it to answer, to answer your question. Matt, uh, do, you, do you mind uh, just speaking to that briefly? Is that something that's actually used? You still with us, Matt? Molly, is Matt muted? You should be unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess whatever was on the plans originally in 2013, um, as far as a, a fueling area, um, I suggest that we do again. Um, if, if something was removed by mistake, um, I certainly did not intend that. Um, so I would suggest that we just, um, whatever was approved in 2013, that we do the same thing. And if I need to add something to the plan um, to show that, uh, we could definitely do that. Okay, thank you. Jace, does that help you? Yep, I'm okay with it. So, okay with it. Do you have any uh, thing to say about truck traffic? Nope. Sounds like um, that was taken care of or I decided. Yep. Okay. So uh, the next person would be Diane. Um, in the past, I know that Pep have taken care of noise issues and I have no problem with um, any of that this evening. I have no problems with the trucks. I'm okay with that. I would like to see the refueling area put back on the um, plan. Uh, my only issue is, and, and this may be a question for Matt or Mike, is there a Knox box on that gate? 
and can it be used and to lock the gates? And why are they being left unlocked? Matt, do you want to answer that, please? Uh, yeah, we traditionally always try to, to lock gates. Um, I guess um, I, I'm kind of confused at, at, at about them being unlocked. Um, I think for the most part, we've always tried to do that. Um, I'd have to kind of look exactly at the operations manual. I know that there was some concern with the fire department and the police department, but um, there, it, I'd have to look at exactly what it said in there. But we traditionally lock our pit. Um, or we block the entrance to the pit with one of our front loaders so that nobody can get to the site at nighttime. Um, we do that quite a bit as well. As we'll, we'll park one of our trucks right out front of the gate so nobody can, can get in. Okay, Madam Chair, that being said, if he is putting any type of equipment in front of the gate that the fire department or the police cannot get in, then that's 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 a problem. I would like to see the Knox box being used. The um, risk, uh, first responders, in my opinion, do have keys for these Knox boxes. Okay, good. Uh, Lenny, you're next. Hi. Yeah. Um, I guess it would be good to see the uh, the fuel storage plants see them added to the plans. Um, it sounds like he's okay with doing that, so I don't think there's any problem there. Um, as far as security goes, I don't have any problem with that. Uh, sounds like he has a plan to deal with the noise. And it sounds like he's reached an agreement with the city on which roads he's going to use, so I'm okay with that. Okay, good. Um, so, Jack, you're next. I don't have any problems with any of that stuff. Uh, security, I mean, <clears throat> if people want to go around the gate, they're going to go around the gate. Um, I don't think there's anything in there for the cops or the fire department to mess with. Seems like he's going to put the uh, uh, refueling spot on the plans. So I'm good. Um, Tom. Yeah, same thing. Uh, the noise sounds like it's been addressed in the past, um, and even then it was minimal. Um, traffic, that's been well addressed. Security, I have no issues um, with with it the way it is, and the refueling. I would like to I would like to see it on the plan. Um, at the end of the day, this is a. You know, we keep we keep looking at it as a uh, uh, renewal. It is a new application, um, so it should be included. I think it was just I think it was left out by by accident, and that sign sounds like it's going to go back in. But just looking forward is, you know, we should almost always include it or require it because it is everything is considered a new submission. Over. Jennifer. Um, I don't have any issue in agreement with uh, uh, several other board members that, you know, just to add that fueling area back to the plan. Okay. So it sounds pretty consistent um, with um, the one exception that Diane has um, uh, suggested no blocking of the entryway. Matt seems has suggested that the gates um, can be locked. I think that there's pretty consistent feedback from the planning board on that. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. The next issue is next steps. Okay, so I think we've provided our direction on each of these topics. Um, so I think we need to now set a date um, by which the applicant would have um, his revised materials submitted back. Are there any suggestions by board or if we throw out kind of the standard three weeks um, that we've used in the past, are there thoughts? 
Madam Chair, may I speak? Go ahead, please, Ben. Um, I was sitting here looking at the calendar this afternoon. If we go three weeks from today, which is what, the 24th, is that correct? Uh, let me get to my calendar. Three weeks from today would be, yep. yes, the 24th. Our next scheduled meeting is the 17th. Uh, so if he gets back to us on the 24th, then our next meeting would be what? After that, July 1st? Mm, potentially, but um, Diane, that would not necessarily give staff enough time to review the material. Um, so I was hoping that we would have an opportunity um, so if it comes in on the 24th and you want it on the 1st, that means that that staff, well, staff would have essentially a week. Um, I guess what I'm asking. The staff, the staff would have basically a day in order to prepare a memo for you for a meeting on the 1st. So that's okay, let me, when, yeah. Let me rephrase that then. Um, yes. So are you looking for, he, gets it in within three weeks on the 24th of June and our next meeting about this will be the 15th of July then? Correct. I'm okay with that schedule. Okay. Do you want to keep going around now? <coughs> we can go to Lenny next. <coughs> yes, please. <coughs> I know we're a little over time, so. I guess if that's, I guess that's what we need to do. It sounds like Matt needs to do some consulting as well, but yeah, hopefully we can, we can do this on the 15th. Okay. Um, Jack. I'm fine with the, what we proposed. Um, Tom. I concur with the 15th. Um, and Crystal. The 15th sounds fine to me. Thank you. I'm sorry, what did you say? The 15th sounds fine. Thank you. Jace? No issues with the dates. Um, Jennifer? I'm in agreement with the dates as well. Okay. Okay, so based on that, it sounds like we can table this item, this item and uh, following that deadline. So we'll need a table in motion. I will uh, motion to table this item until the second. On the... Who is the second? Uh, Tom. Tom, thank you. Um, and again, there's no discussion of a tabling motion. So we'll go through. Uh, Jace? Yep. Diane? Yes. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Um, Tom? Yes. Crystal? Yes. I don't even know where you are now. And Jennifer? Yes. Yeah. Those have been tabled. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much uh, this evening, Matt. Um, appreciate your, you joining and your comments. Um, so moving on in our agenda then uh, uh, for the planning director's report, I don't know if there's anything you would like to um, share, Beth? Uh, I think probably the, uh, uh, the only thing, I, a couple of very quick things. Molly will be moving to Maine at the end of the week. Um, and uh, yeah, very exciting. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, looking forward to having her in the office. Um, um, uh, the planning department is still not physically open to the public. Um, um, our administrative assistant is out until uh, at least the first week of July. Um, Molly will not be coming in until at least June 19th. Um, I will probably come in shortly before that. Um, to try to make some space. I have to I have to do some housekeeping since all this stuff is, you know, gathered as we've been away. Um, 
Uh, beyond that, uh, at some point, I, I'm not really prepared to do this this evening, but I would like to talk with you a bit more about what's going on in uh, the mill yard. Um, we um, have hired some consulting assistants to do structural engineering and architectural analysis um, on the International Woolens property, and I'd like to engage with you a bit more about that. I really don't have uh, the ability to go into it a lot tonight, and I think everybody's pretty tired, so I just want to give you a heads up that there's some good stuff happening there. Um, and uh, I think I know that I'm going to remember stuff tomorrow that I wanted to share with you, but I think the only other thing I just wanted to uh, suggest is that I'm really looking forward um, to... Um, I'm really looking forward to... Um, uh, your feedback on the draft amendments to the IR zone. I did send materials out to you um, and asked you for comment um, in, in, real, in anticipation that we would not actually get to a meeting this evening. I do want to tell you that I have got some feedback uh, back from at least one um, mill owner, mill property owner, that I would like to share with you. I'm not going to take your time tonight, but I will email that out to you tomorrow. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to just mention is you'll see that I've melded the, um, uh, the work on amending the land use table associated with the IR zone with the work that we had been doing before we all got hit by the COVID um, crisis um, on modifying, uh, reformatting the land use table. Um, so I went ahead and I, I melded the reformatting into this latest draft of the IR zone amendments. Uh, I stayed out of changing any of the uses in any of the other districts except in two cases. I think it was two cases. One was um, there was just holes in municipal uses that I think were intended to follow all, you know, the other way, the way that municipal uses are treated in every other zone, which is essentially that they're permitted with review. And the other one was that um, driveways, for some reason, never were completely filled out. And obviously, driveways um, are intended to be an allowed use in all of the zones, except you know resource protection. I'm assuming. Um, but just talking about the straight uh, um, uh, Euclidean zones, basically the regular zones, none of the overlay zones, et cetera, that roads are there. So you remember when we had left that conversation, there were probably somewhere between eight to 12 different kinds of land uses that you specifically uh, wanted to pull up and have conversations about whether there should be some modifications. I haven't forgotten that. And so even though you haven't seen it in this reformatted table, you, I will be bringing that back to you. Um, but I'm very anxious to get to a work session. We have uh, a mill owner who is very, very um, interested in seeing some amendments of the IR zone. It's, it's creating um, some issues trying to fill the building under the current, um, the current way the land use tables are laid out and the standards are laid out. Um, so please do go home, review that material, look for the follow-up email I'm going to send out tomorrow, maybe even tonight, um, that provides the, uh, the input from an interested individual. And um, please send me your comments. Um, the reason I'm asking you to do that rather than waiting for the next work session is that I would like to keep working on this, and I certainly will bring it back to you uh, again for work session. We, we won't act on this. Uh, and bring it to public hearing without you having a full conversation about it together. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> um, is there anything for communications from anyone? Any talk of when we can meet in person? <laughs> um, under the governor's order, I believe that um, we can start holding face-to-face -face meetings with up to 50 people uh, mid-June, I think, is when it came back. I know the city council um, at its last meeting had an active conversation about whether uh, they wanted to start meeting in person, and only one of the councilors was prepared to do so at that time. There was a suggestion of a mix of a uh, remote meeting and face-to-face -face, um, so that um, I think the expression of one of the counselors was, I don't have a problem with you, um, with us having face-to-face -face meeting as long as any individual member 
has the ability to not meet in person but to meet remotely. Um, and um, so that statement was put on the table. And then when they came to a vote, um, uh, it was six to one to continue to use the remote meetings. Um, it is certainly something to converse about. I think one of the issues you need to think about, it's not, it doesn't happen very often that you have 50 people at a planning board meeting, but it's not unheard of. And so what are you going to do when the 51st person walks in? Um, and that's something I think for you guys to think about. So um, uh, we can certainly put that on the agenda for a conversation at a work session if you would like to do that, Jack. No, I was just curious. Um, 51 people, 51st people walks in, then we might make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> might start soliciting uh, people to come in. Uh, this is Tom. I only had, yeah. Yeah, I only, only had one comment. Um, I don't under I, I don't know the reason for doing the rotation on who started the vote and all that, but I think it kind of confused it as we went through. Um, unless somebody really has heartburn over it, I recommend just going off medical order, starting with Jace, going right down the row. Um, it just it makes it easier to make sure we're ready to chime in when it's our turn. Um, but that's just my opinion. I agree. I agree with Tom. I was caught off guard a couple of times, so I apologize. And I have no issues going first. That's because you're a rock star. So I'm, because I can't see you. Who, who said they agreed with Tom? Diane. Crystal. And Crystal. Crystal thank you. And Diane, and you agreed. And Jace, all agree. Okay. All righty. Jack, did you want to put the issue of uh, when to meet in person on a work session, or do you want to just kind of see where things are going? No, I just want to see what, what's going on. I, I didn't watch the council meeting last night, so they, I'm sure they probably discussed it. Well, they may have last night. I did not watch last night's meeting, but a, you know, two weeks ago, that was what the conversation was. Things may have changed by then. Two weeks are a long time. Beth, can I interject? Yep. I, wa I, wa I watched and I listened to the uh, council meeting last night and I heard nothing about that again. Okay. Okay. All righty. Motion to adjourn. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Diana. I'll second. Who seconded it? Jennifer. Third. Jennifer. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, believe it or not, it's got to be a damn roll call vote again. <laughs> Jace. Jace. Yes. Diane. Yes. Uh, Lenny. Yes. Yes. Uh, Jack. Yes. Uh, Tom. Yes. Crystal. Yes, please. Okay. And Jennifer. <laughs> yes. Okay. Officially adjourned at 919. Adjourned. Yeah.